Popper was getting a lot of entries, Robo was a beast on the B site, and finally Roman, who was just kind of a jack of all trades. But they seemed to lack that firepower at the end. Once Nico woke up, once Chris J started to get more frags and overtime, they couldn't really deal. They couldn't hang. Yeah. Did you see the whole, hey Nico, it's Roman, let's go bowling? bowling yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, some of the members of the community are masterminds when it do, does come to some dank memes. But that's Fluffy Gangsters, and of course on the other side of the stage are Optic Gaming. This is where I want to start our main discussion, because it's a, an opportunity to actually discuss something that I've been, it's been on the tip of my tongue for a while when talking about Optic and talking about North America in general. First though, we'll run through that roster, Daps, Nafly, Rush, Stanislaw, Law, and of course the import Mixwell. And that's actually where the point I want to make live. Mixwell coming in from, of course, GBOT. We saw him kind of his debut to a lot of us was over at uh, his performance in Barcelona, the ESL Expo there. But this is like, becoming a bit more of a trend, gentlemen. This kind of importing European talent into North America. I'm thinking, of course, about Tabson over in NRG as well. What's your general feel about this? We're seeing more Europeans fly over to North America and find success. Mixwell, I would assume, wouldn't have found success like this and wouldn't be on a stage like this over in Europe. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. Um so I don't have anything against it. I think it's, okay. uh, if anything, it's uh, any teams uh, somewhat smartening up if they see that they can actually get a player and they have the they have the money behind it to actually you know support a move for that player and it can, it's something that can actually make them better. Then why not? The more and more you know, the yeah. more or the bigger the game gets, uh, it's going to happen more and more. I think just as time goes by. And then of course, devil's advocate here. What about the North American opinion? Like they take our jobs, you know? <laughs> what do you think about that, Vince? Get better then. Like, pretty simple. If Mixwell's getting invited into the team, then you're just not good enough. Like, improve. And yeah. the things for Mixwell, it makes a lot of sense. It allows you, if you couldn't get in from the EU way, to do mm -hmm. so through NA. Like, if you can play well with Optic, you can start to get a couple of upsets. Maybe you can get to the Major. Whereas he wouldn't have done it with g -Bots, right? So, mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. I'm all for it. And performance-wise, how has he been doing? Never mind. It looks like we're doing maps. Um, it was a great discussion, gents. <laughs> Maybe we'll come back to it, but there's already maps in motion. I don't want to miss this one. So let's talk a little bit about this veto process. Of course, banning down to one if this is your first catch of the offline qualifier. Yeah, already overpass being taken out by, uh, by Fluffy Gangster is pretty much a respect ban. They don't want to play Optic on it. Normally, their go-to ban is cash. Obviously, they're still going to have lots of opportunities to go there, but they decide to get overpass first. Dust two, just uh, the first ban for Optic pretty much every single game. No big surprise there. Mirage, simply because, well, that's one of the best maps, probably the best maps actually from Fluffy Gangsters, which says a bit when we saw how well they did on Dust two yesterday. Uh, Cash, there it is, the, the nor ordinary ban for Fluffy Gangsters, pretty much expected. And I would expect Nuke to go up as well because they don't play it, they haven't had the time. Didn't want to play chicken. Through. Yeah, exactly. And I'm expecting Dust 2 to be gone from Optic here. Otherwise, I'd be very surprised. Already it's, already, it's already been already, taken. Already, yeah. Oh, already yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm actually, yeah, because that's their go to pick. I even said that. It's still early in the morning, but Cobblestone is being okay. taken out. And, uh, well, honestly, I think that's just a, this is a veto that Optic can be pretty okay with. I I still think they could have chanced play, uh, playing Cobblestone. Uh, they, the mistakes they made yesterday versus Gambit were. Mm. Evident enough that they should be able to to contain them and actually limit them to the point where they should be a better team than uh, the Fluffy Gangsters on it. While we're talking about Cobblestone, I do want to quickly highlight, guys. I know there are some questions. If you haven't been on Twitter Sphere recently, this is the previous patch, so it is yeah, oh, there's yeah. no stairs on B Plateau just yet, and so it will be basically the same game that you saw yesterday as well. Actually, it turns out that the, the casters in the game is already ready. Fluffy Gangsters won the knife round, and we are rolling straight into this one. Bang on schedule, so we can give you these games ASAP. Quickly, just a team name, gents. Predictions in this one. Optic. Optic. Beautiful. Okay, they think North America's going to take this one, but Fluffy Gangsters impressed us yesterday. Let's jump into the casting booth and see what they have to say about this match. Um, well... Uh, yeah, hey. we're, we're ready's a strong word. Um, we're working on that, but yeah, we're excited to be casting this game at the yes. very least. We would like to be able to get to the server. That's the thing we're waiting on. We can watch it here, but we need to have our little own view. So hopefully, we get that sorted out and we can have a little look. But outside of that, <laughs> <coughs> get back game. to the game. Yeah, yeah Fluffy Gangs against Optic. Both these teams had opportunities, and yeah. they seem to let them slip here. Um, fault in different places. I feel Fluffy Gangsters is maybe doing better than. Expected. Yeah. You know, the match result was extremely impressive. Sadly, just kind of got ground down in the end. You saw the Nico show coming in. Next, Chris J. All that added up. Yep. But on the other side, Optic didn't really have the best of performances. They had one good half, and then we started to want to kill ourselves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it sort of happened. So I don't know what to read into this. I feel that Optic still have a lot more to bring to the plate here. We didn't see the full picture, but how much can change in one day? Yeah, I mean. Uh 
it's it's basically for fluffy gangsters. It, last night was positive in a sense that they definitely were way more competitive than we were expecting them to be. On the other hand, Optic had one good half. Um, on T side of Cobblestone, they played phenomenally yeah. um, together and, and just doing the right choices, playing their anti ecos really well, and uh, yeah, just playing off with each other basically. On the CT side, quite the contrary, uh, managing to win two eco rounds and one actual buy round. It's not gonna it's not gonna cut it on the CT side of Cobblestone, or any other map for that matter. Um, so definitely, I mean, Optic, as, as we've seen them recently, I think they've been uh, they've been getting on our radar after Mixwell joined the team, and they've actually seemed like, you know, there's glimpses of hope here, you know, that they could be one of the top contenders for main A, uh, but still the consistency definitely is not there, and uh, they fal they faltered in, in situations where you think it's just a matter of time before they close out a game, but this is the matchup where you think they should be heavily favored, and we're going to be going into the match right away. As we can see, Optic Gaming is going to be starting on that T side. The Daps has a, um, a set of nades going on. Everyone else with the armor. The other side, there's no kid in play from the CT, so they're backing on winning these duels before the bombs go down. Yeah, and I would say being trained, the opening presence from Fluffy Gangsters was actually exceptional on the map that we saw on Dust 2. Yep. Lacking from Optic, considering Mixwell even said, you know, this is one of the worst games I've personally ever had. So, hopefully for him, he can come into this fresh, nice little play up through uh, Ivy there, going to be trying to get the pressure going, and Robbo's already fallen. Patron now going to be pinched in on both sides, doesn't really have any safe place to wait. I like this play from Optic so far, it seems well constructed, it seems well placed, and so far it's working pretty perfectly. Get down to Roman and Little, and sadly Little was all the way over on B, but the flank has come through. He got one, but that's about all he's going to get here, and it's a really nicely constructed round from Optic. Yeah, well, that was a classic. You send three alley, and uh, you smoke off left side uh, once you get through alley, and then you got, I think you had one coming through teammate, or maybe two, and uh, they had a little sandwich effect on yard, and the one by one floppy gang gangsters went down. Optic picking that one up and then continuing on the, on the machine they had in the uh, first match on Cobblestone on the T-side as well. Um, let's see how they continue here. Fluffy Gangsters is seemingly putting a bit of an investment here. It's a little does have a scout. He's going to connect with it as well right from the get-go. Mixwell going down to 31 HP with that AK hand rush. He's already made his way down the ladder as well. Getting some early information of if there's anyone pushed up. As we can see from the radar though, they are Fluffy Gangsters playing quite passively on the yard. The is kind of high. It's a long brother. All right. Let's go fluffy gangsters. Let's see what you can do here. Again, though, the thing with Optic is that one of their sides always seems fine, so I'm not going to really do it too much yet. Yeah. Um, again, a little bit of damage coming out already. Naf going to be dropped down. But the SMGs are doing the work. One rifle doing the work so far, though, would be Stanislaw with the AK, but down to Roman and Chopper. And, oh, I don't know how much you can really do here. You could do a little bit of damage, maybe, but at this point, it's it's pretty much a solid round. Yes, they would have been better off just trying to save this weapon, to be honest with you. Uh, good job from Optic once again, utilizing grenades, smokes, Molotovs, and flashes properly as they pushed on yard. Doesn't matter, there was four people from Fluffy Gangsters there, but still, when you use those smokes and, and flashes and you, you go together as a team, you play off each other, everything should be okay, and that's exactly what happened. It's going to be just chopper left with 9 HP to just spawn with the CZ. Doesn't really have uh, all too much he can hope for. Except for maybe one extra kill. He has, uh, I think, some Daps coming his way. But Daps decides to just fall back and not do anything about it. Okay. So as you said, it might have been worthwhile maybe keeping on to that scout then. Yeah, Could have maybe done be. a little bit more. As I said, you know, this round is pretty much done. You know, it's, you're not going to get too much achieved. Although, then again, Optic did some weird stuff <laughs> on Cobble. But so far, they seem to have their heads in the right place. So you can imagine the Daps and Mixwell with one season away from the T side here. As they still are retaining those SMGs. So they can just go and wreak havoc as well. And that's going to just pass straight out towards A. Pick up a quick kill towards Chopper. And he was the one with the CZ, if I'm not mistaken. So now that's kind of lost to the gods. But Robo quickly makes a bit of a mad dash, grabs it back to hand. But. This is pretty much Daps now coming into the Master 2, and well, that Mac 10 is having a great time. But CZ though, close range. It can be a deadly weapon for sure. Nah, it's only going to be El Patron left. I guess four, but he's not going to be able to do much. I know about the need, and now we finally go into that first weapon round. Let's see what uh, the Fluffsters buy. The fluff Fluffsters? Yeah. Is that it? I don't know. Fluffers, huh? That's an interesting way of... Uh, Fluffies. Fluffies. I mean, come on, you're fluffy gangsters, you have a panda as your logo. <laughs> anything goes. Stick of the hands, stick of the stickers. <laughs> <laughs> no, a little, little with an op hill. Um, he does oh, not have a lot of, yeah, they, the lack of grenades is massive here. Yeah, them. I'm, I'm kind of curious how this goes, because Mixwell had a really poor game before, and this is such a map that can really do well 
for Orpus. So Mixwell needs to make a good impression here. Little, what, a, what an insane play on Dust2 as well from him. So this is going to be a curious little head-to-head -head between these two. So we'll have to wait and see if that actually comes through in the end at the moment. Just kind of like toying with each other down by Ivy, but no one going to make a play out of it. And already Daps keeping onto that SMG, maybe just looking to be a bit of a nuisance and see what he can do going forward. Yeah, Optic Gaming just building some ground. They have taken over towards the end of bomb site to be able to make an execute towards that bomb site or, or fake it. Daps here working its way through. Well, the bomb's still very close to team main, so uh, right now, from the looks of things, it might be a split to that yard. But it all depends on where they move the bomb. Mixwell here, still just chilling around. And Rush has made his way down ladder, so let's see how that works out for him. Buffy Gangs is still with very limited economy here. They're down to what? The Molotov, Flashbang, and an aid. It's not exactly ideal. And look how much the T side still has in their pockets here. Those mollies can speed up these side takes pretty quickly. So Little's going to be having to wait here in a bit of a predicament. He's seen them coming through, but the timing's a little off. Now they're already out by train one. So how much impact can this man have? Absolutely instrumental in Dust 2, but this one's already been backed away. He can't actually withstand this fight already. The T side are actually making their presence pretty well known, aren't they? That's interesting. Five on five after plant situation. We don't even get to see this too often, especially on train. Usually there's at least a kill a piece coming before something happens, but now we have the kills coming in Nafly. Opens up with all the chopper as a retake is in all full fruition, but he's getting denied by everyone on Optic. Only Roman a little left right now. And you definitely need to go try to get the numbers in your favor on the safety side before the bomb gets planted because there's so many little angles that you can utilize in the Nafra plant as the T side. And if you play off of each other, it's close to impossible to try to defuse that bomb as a CT. It really is. And little being chased down this. Actually, oh, look at Whoa. this guy. He's actually such a beast at this. He's, he's managed to stay alive so far. I don't know if he's going to be able to get away completely. Stan's still trying to bait out, but he's just being the one-man band at the moment. Sure, it doesn't win the round, but he keeps the AWP into play, so he can still definitely have presence into these later rounds. But again, they kind of just went, okay, we'll forego the site hold. They didn't make any initial impact there for the CT side, at least, as the T side to come through. And But you, you said it pretty, pretty clearly that retaking on that site isn't particularly easy, especially in a 5-on-5. Five five. It's no. not... Not exactly ideal, to say the least. No, and uh, when you don't have any utility to work with either. Like, you don't have any flashes really. I, I, th I don't think they had any grenades really left anymore, so super hard to make that happen. Now, it's going to be on Little with that up, and he's trying to gain control here in Alley, but they are, I think, it's going to be stun his love mm. towards the team main, just watching that angle. But Little's going to be pre-aiming that train. He already spotted the hand of stun his love. Not sure if he was, uh, stun his love was aware of this fact. So, Paul Flash, now there's two in Alley. Roman also. Coming into play here. Well, I guess they know at least where that AWP is. They found out a little bit of the information. Again, you have to go for what you're given when you only have one AWP and a couple of Deagles, five sevens in play, not too much to be uh, worked with for the CT side. They've gone for a little bit of a stack towards B, I guess. Robo, Patron, and Chopper all lined up here. And so far, the T side might actually be considering this. Yeah, but it's fine though. If they use the grenades once again, effectively, they should be fine. And if they check where Robo is right now, because he could be that changing player. But oh, he gets one. Little comes in as well with an AWP. Now it becomes a uh, four on two situation, make it a, yeah, it's a four on two situation right now. With just Nafly adapts left, the bomb is down in the bomb side too. So that's all the play for here for the CTs with Nafly and Z connector. He's gonna get one. He might be able to get another on Roman, but I think it's gonna sandwiched. This is kind of worrying, but now the last two players for the CT side didn't recover the weapons. They were further back, so they don't quite have the firepower, but tell a lie. Chopper's found Little Zorp, so that's now back into play. This could still be interesting. Bomb's still down at B. I assume Chopper's seen that, and Roman's going on the long rotate. Maybe actually not seeing it has meant that Roman's gone on a bit of a walkabout, but Chopper's now going to find out exactly where that bomb was. Yeah, and neither of them will hear yeah. the bomb getting planted. Chopper actually making his way to Yard. Is, is this giving up on this? No, they're, they're just not recognizing that the bomb gets planted inside <laughs> at first. Well, they finally do. But them not having... Well, they do have a kit, by the way. They do. But they don't have armors, do they? So, yep. it's still going to be a tough one for them to uh, try to retake. They're not going to be particularly easy. And Daps is hanging around on this. Naps pulled himself back in just in case. And they got reminded this is going to be a little bit trickier than they first imagined. They do have the bomb down now. The clock is starting to tick. And Chopper's starting to consider maybe that AWP is... You know, oh, what more useful down the line, and Nap wow. is just going to feed. All right, nice one. Nap just giving some kills. Uh, not not sure that was the best of plans. Just come dancing through the smoke, but still, the bomb plant the round is one in the end for Optic. But that was a bit of a grind, and it just seemed they lost all firepower once they made it down to the site. A couple of individual one v ones started to appear, and they actually got punished for that by fluffy gangsters who are back on the buy now. Yeah, I mean it was Robo uh, near the bomb site with the PG50 and then Little coming in with the op. They, they managed to make a two-for-one two trade. Mm. Um, so that kind of stopped the push from Optic. 
And uh, Fluffy Gangsters had their opportunity, but it's still going to be up to put the fifth round on the board. Finally, we're going to get a buy, another buy from Fluffy. And uh, seemingly they're going to be having um, sort of a default kind of a CT setup here. Except for the fact a little right now it's going to be pushing into the upper ramp. Shishad decides to fall back though off of the Molotov. Not surprising he actually missed that shot. I haven't seen him miss many shots. That's the thing. The guy's been a bit of a monster. But uh, maybe he only hits like the ridiculously hard shots. You know what I mean? He misses the standard ones and it just only goes off in like a 1v3 no-scope. That would be no good scope. though. <laughs> no, it's not what you want. But you never know. It could be one of those days. Um, but let's see what we have here. Looking at the, the hold towards A as well. Coming out from the Fluffy Gangsters. Extremely passive. They're giving up a lot of these angles. You have no one down by Ivy particularly. Roman's sitting pretty far back. Yeah, the drone's playing by sight. It's, it's not too uncommon at this point. But I'm starting to get used to teams here pushing up by main. Pushing up by pop, but these guys are pretty passive now. It's yeah, it's weird. I I would like to see them apply pressure towards the pop or, or T main. Um, it is I, I feel like the better choice of the two, because especially against a team like Optic that likes to execute heavily, you want to interrupt with it before it really happens. And and look at the kind of case in point here. They have no information that actually no one's followed those smokes out because no one was pushed up. So little actually pushed himself towards A. But now the lineup's coming over towards B. You've got pretty much every single player from the T side looking to make a quick hit here. So Chopper and Little gonna rotate back around. Little needs to be landing these shots and he misses it and that was a vital one. Now Chopper's under pressure left, right and center. Little's gonna make up for it but a little too late. And now 4v3, the T side don't have the advantage and Little's getting back into it. He may not hit the easy ones but now he's starting to warm up here. Bomb's gonna be put down though. Unless Mixwell gets pressured here and actually Little's going for this and he's not done yet. What a sick round again from this man. Every single time, he misses the sitter, then comes back even stronger with the 4K. Yeah, and Chopper, being the lone warrior in, in, uh, in a bomb set, only gets one kill, but manages to uh, uh, keep that attack at bay for a while, with Molotov coming in, and a little, obviously, just chiming into it and getting all these kills. It demolishes the, the attack, and that's going to be the first round going away of Fluffy Gangsters. Sitting at 1-5. Now it's the, the situation where they need to start stringing these rounds together. The economy for Optic is not that pretty, actually, because it's, it's been, uh, you know, they've, they've lost the members, especially in that anti-eco round, and so forth. So they've not been super clear cut rounds. So uh, if uh, Fluffy Gangsters manages to uh, string some rounds together, they may be able to uh, force an eco from Optic. And this is a very different start for Optic, too. They're playing super far back. Maybe expecting finally some aggression to come out from they the are city setting, side. Yeah, they're setting up for those other spokes. They're going to be creating a uh, wall of smoke here, isolating the front of the yard from the bomb site. He's trying to force a plant right away. Robo has made his way towards the Chopper tower. instantly see. on the rotate. Exactly, yeah. And he's going to be able to catch Rush. He gets that first kill. It's going to be one for one trade, though. That's with them all the top. Instead of stop to see the legs. You see D coming up on uh, the ladder, but El Patron here is still fighting. They're all depending on Stan to hold the back as well, and he's doing just fine at that. Patron's going to be found, and now down to a 2v3, but Little's still alive, and there's still something to be seen about this, man. Maybe not on the rifle. That's what happens when you try and go for a rifle. You're not allowed to do anything with it. Stan holds the back, and Optic regain control. And again, these sort of hits are working very well. You you, you, you coined it, actually, earlier on. The Optic do like these default kind of... Yeah. Not defaults, but yeah, executes. Very, yeah, yeah. very structured ways. You want to interrupt with that. If you, if you notice, decide. Make them uncomfortable by playing aggressively. You, you, like, you have to be up close towards the 6 and the 5 train or the ladder room. And um, yeah, just uh, be reserved with your... Just be smart about your grenades, your molotovs, your smokes. You can once you start seeing the smokes come raining in, that's when you use your own smokes towards the team or the Molotov, depending what you have at your disposal. But instead, they decide to fall back and like, kind of let Optic have all that room, and that's exactly what they want you to do. Um, and uh, yeah, it's Fluffy Gangsters are not having a great time of, of dealing with this situation, and Mixwell already opening things up with that first kill. I mean, it looks like they have tried to find some aggression here, pushing a little closer. You've got Rubber trying to play a little closer to kind of team main. You've got Throne pushed up by Electric. Then they're trying it, but then conceding the first pick there towards you know, Roman going down and Mixwell finding it, it's kind of make it a bit of a struggle. And you can see them trying to find a way back through to it. But Little is going to be dedicated down by Ivy, so he needs to be quite cautious too. Again, this is not a, <laughs> a fun spot to play, but the lives of Robo and El Patron depend on it, and he's going to come up with the goods. Mixwell goes down. Well, that's the one for one trade out, but you can see the instant response. Naf and Rush want to apply pressure, but Daps and Stanislaw are still playing pretty slow in this one. Robbo's holding down by T Main, as said, he just turns away at the wrong time. The pressure being applied perfectly, but Little almost lines up too. He finds one out of those, almost goes for the follow up down towards Pop, but support now arrives in the form of Chopper. But there goes Little, and you've got the three players alive again for Optic here. The timing there on these plays from them has been pretty spot on, but Chopper's. 
In a bit of a tricky spot here, two mollies as well with Optic to clear out. Yeah, and not much he could do really. I think this is going to be a tactical pass for them as well. But yeah, good reaction from Optic there. Obviously, unlucky timing for the CT playing up close to his T main. But once he went down, the players in alley just reacting. Here we see a little actually connect on both players. Yeah, but rush of 14 HP. Exactly. He's not going to be able to make that double happen. That could have been uh, the difference maker in that round. But, um, you know, fluffy, fluffy boys are having a bit of a tough, tough time here so far mm. dealing with the attacks from uh, Optic. They need to be, I just, I just want to see them more aggressive. That's the name of the game. Uh, towards the team main and ladder. Yeah, I, I hope that, that you, you'd assume that that's the conclusion they come to from this as well. Because sometimes it's very hard to see all of that when you're in the game, but it's a very clear response to kind of set play. So I'm hoping that, I'm not actually sh too sure who the in-game leader is for these guys. So I'd actually quite like to find out who's kind of calling the shots for them, because it'd be an interesting read to see how they approach this now. And how does Optic adjust? Or do they adjust? They don't particularly need to, but then maybe no. you'll start assuming they'll be aggressive. We'll see what they go for. Maybe Optic just going to throw out a curve. Or again, they're coming into this round with absolutely no worries anyway, considering they've got the two Mac 10s and a full set of nades to clear out any corners with. But we did see at least Robbo doing some damage over by B when they went for that play off the back of it previously. So there's still stuff to be seen here. And Optic know that you can still pick up pistol rounds even if you, you know what I mean? They, they certainly yeah. didn't work with that. So And don't change the winning formula. No. Keep That's doing it until it doesn't work. Exactly. Just keep plowing at it. That's going to be Dabs opening up with Rush as well, and they are just plowing into this outer bomb site right now. Like flies are FLG going down one by one. And that's going to be uh, clean and easy and simple. And that's going to be some bank coming in Optic's way, actually. And that's going to make things a little bit easier for them, and as we can see, Fluffy Gangster still, their economy is still not pretty. There's UMP in play for Moss, and lack of, uh, well, diffuse kits and the utility. It's noticeable. That makes it that much harder. So you decide off train. Do you want, want to have those choke points small tops or smoked off once the attack comes in to make it less, less comfortable for the T side? But let's see how they now approach this. Because we want to see a little more aggression, a little bit oh. closer play, and that's seemingly They're... what they're going for. Little, Patron, yep. Robo all pushing up here. Roman's just going to be pretty much locking down Ivy as much as he can, pretty passively. But Patron gets a little caught out. They're not expecting Dash, but the double peak deals with him comfortably. Now down to a 5v4, they finally have the advantage, expecting a flex from another angle throughout this map, and they're not wrong to be feeling so. There was a little bit of a closer push down towards Ivy as well, so Rome better be ready for this one, because Rush and Naf are looking like they want to get into this. Yeah, that's a good opening, finally, for Fluffy Gangsters. Daps wasn't really ready for it. He was expecting some of the push, but wasn't expecting to get pushed by two players from different angles. He gets taken out, and that's going to be the in-game leader of Optic going down. Now the rest of his team... Just holding right now, just waiting for any further aggression from the CTs, but smartly so. Right now, they are not really giving much. And Optic is going to make their way through Alley with through two players again. And you have one in teammate, one out ladder. That's going to be a standing up right now. And that E-Box and oh man, opens things up in Alley. It's going to be a good hold for them. And now it's all up to Stanislav, really. Just might try to make a play. It's going to get one of the Robo, but doesn't know there's a player in the City's Tower, but Mixwell does. He's going to get that kill. And all of a sudden, the situation becomes a 3 on 3. Fell back to a default, and they've been punished for this FLG. They are, they are not having a good time at this point. Now bomb planted. Again, Mixwell, Stanislaw, and Naf still alive. Roman's got a good step at this. Down by the back of Ivy, but Naf's going to be keeping tabs on that one. The push-up's not going to be too comfortable, and Little still smoked out. So, again, limited options here for the CT side, but they kind of need to go for some of these at some point. They're one to eight right now, and Naf's going to be trading out, but actually Roman just picks up the clean kill. Chopper's found Stanislaw, and now Mixwell being pressured. Now he needs to come up with a bit of a performance here. He does find Little at least now. 1v2. Can't take the fight. And the defuse comes in. Very well played in the end from FLG. But just finding individual individual fights there. None of those crossfires seem to hold up. Exactly. And uh, well, in the end, that's pretty FLG picking that one up. It's an important one. They managed to stay alive with two at least. But still, a lot of pressure on them. Their economy stopped pretty going further. If uh, they get reset at this point in time, it's going to be going horribly wrong for them on the TTT side. But that early aggression towards T main eventually paying off dividends. Um, let's see what their approach is going to be going further. Seems like it's going to be more aggressive. He was making his way towards the uh, ladder. But in the meanwhile, Optic Gaming has decided to approach towards the inner bomb side more. Pretty much all their, all their team right now just uh, playing towards there. And this one's got. Decent, not necessarily an idea, he's not particularly seen anything that's given it away, but he's got himself a good position and actually not going for that instant peak up top, which wasn't really paying out much. 
See how he approaches this one. He does need to at least probably hit one on the way down, and I'll assume he'll do that. Again, wow. he misses these shots. And that one, this is really quite strange. He'll end up landing like four of the most ridiculous ones, but the setup's not so much, but it's Chopper this time to deal with the two who did start the playthrough from upper. Now Stan, Mixwell, and Naf have to consider their options. They're kind of running out of ways to approach this with such a disadvantage, and they've gone back towards A. Exactly, and you know, there's smokes left, so it's going to be the raw firepower right now. That fly is on a manhunt here. Going to quad, it's going to find Patron, it's not. Well, he does find him, but doesn't get the kill, does he? Robo's still up here in tower. He's going to get one, but not two. The Roman with the cleanup, and that's going to be a round going in the way of Fluffy Gangsters with four alive as well. It's going to be two in a row for them, so they uh, they dodge that uh, possibility of getting reset. To still have a chance at this. You can thank Chopper for that, too. He, yeah. he actually played incredibly calm, considering if you're sitting there listening saying, or hearing Little saying, yeah, there's two pushing. I haven't hit either of them. Have fun on the bomb site. He's just like, oh, well, I'm, I'm probably dead, but nicely done by Chopper to be able to deal with that. But again, Optics still have plenty of money to work with in this and uh, back on the big buy. But I'm still wondering where Mixwell is. This guy was so outstanding before. He's having such a, not a mediocre game, but for him and the kind of, like, I guess, uh, amount I hold him to, this is a little bit weary. But still, Patron's going on a bit of a walk up here. Let's spot out Stan. Doesn't actually land the shot. He needs to be careful now as Mixwell is down by team main. Robbo's gonna be having to try and hold by pop. Rush there as well. So again, trying this kind of aggressive start. Generally, once they get the pick, they sit back towards a default play, which worked just fine before. But let's see if Optic are now aware of this. Yeah. It becomes a waiting game right now of uh, our game of chicken, I guess. Who's gonna be pulling the trigger first? So here on top of six strength. He does pick, well, it doesn't pick up Rush. It seems like he should have. And then it seems like it's going to be Molotov by Mixwell. Why not? Robo's still alive here, though. He's going to be able to get that retaliation kill, but now fly ready in alley as well for Roman to make it a 4 on 3. So it's definitely heavily favoring Optic. Optic are just seemingly so kind of in charge of how these rounds are going down at the moment. Even if Fluffy Gangsters do try and get a bit of an aggression going, it just seems to be pulled apart. So now Robo and Little basically need to hold this themselves. And even with three players on the site, it's difficult, let alone two. And now you can see as to why so many angles. So many lines of sight come into play, and they just get absolutely shut out. And there you go. Final one comes for Naf there, and <laughs> it oh. feels to me like it's like a house of cards and starts uh, just falling apart. Really for against. Seriously, I mean, it's it's first it's like yeah, it's looking good, and then just by piece by piece, they crumble under pressure towards the end of the round, and it's going to be Optic picking one more round, but still money on Fluffy Gangster's side. They have an op on Little, uh, but it's easy on Roman. Moss can play one and four. They are fully invested under this one. Let's see if Optic can make it into double digits in the first half. On the T side of training, nonetheless. Yeah, I, I, I've argued mildly this is becoming more T sided ish, but <laughs> not not quite to this caliber. At least when you watch teams like Navi, it certainly feels as such. But yeah, Navi a little different. Uh, it goes back to these and two. forth. It's always it really a, ma it's a matter of one thing, uh, one team finding something new and then another team you know, countering that thing. But oh. that's going to be a little with the double. Somehow, what the timing just works in his favor massively. He, uh, yeah, you could say he gets lucky there. That, that was absolute <laughs> luck. But it seems to come into Little's favor a hell of a lot. But now the rest of FLG can just like build off the back of that. This should be a closed down round. But Optic is going to still try a little bit of something here. That takes a little wander towards B, but doesn't find much out as Chopper sat back a little further, playing quite cautiously. Little's going to rotate over, but now down to this 2v2, pretty much an even trade out if it in theory comes to it. But Roman's just down to the CZ, but he still spots out Rush, gets a good tag, but just gets caught in the end. Doesn't, yeah, that's just stupidity, to be honest with you. Four into a situation, fall back, let the two remaining turrets make the play, and then you react. You don't need to get the information because you have the mind power. Now instead, Still doable for Optic Gaming. Daps and Rush couldn't do this. They're going to be making their way towards the inner bomb site. Daps already on the bomb site. And he's going to try to plant the bomb. Chopper very close on lower ramp. He's going to get that one on the rush. Now Daps obviously knows where he is, but he's going to be surrounded by three players. And taken down by Little as well. So that's a round going in the way of FLG. Get themselves back into this slowly but surely. And to be fair, after the kind of questionable choice they made of kind of being caught out there at one point, it did start to a little bit scary when you see the two players. You're going to take pretty much a 2v1 fight until Little was able to get over there quickly enough. But scoreline-wise, I guess like a 5-10 a, a sort of thing would have been awful, but it's still not great for FLG. No, I mean, when you're Optic, this is, uh, is a comfortable situation to be in. There's not a comfortable scoreline. The Fluffy Gangsters 
can even make out of this anymore. Um, it's always going to be an uphill battle for them. But, um, well, we all know what happened with Optic on the other Cobblestone previously, so it's never over until it's over. As Little starts things off with the kill on the daft, it's going to be a full-on rush here from Optic. They made their way towards Quad already. Sanislav somehow wins that duel against Roman. Seems like the longest spray of the year. Little still in the play, and his kills going back and forth. It comes a three-on-two situation, making it's a three-on-one. It's just little. Yeah, a little too much for me. <laughs> the thing, this guy is literally just solo carry. Uh, how how much of the rest of FG paid for this sort of carry? Because finally, Patron finds one. But my God, four kills again. Yeah, uh, I'd I love mean, to see if someone can work out the stat, or even be bothered to go back and find out, uh, you know, how many kills he got in the rounds they won. Like the you know the actual impact out of the rounds he's done damage in. I'd love to see that because this guy is doing some ridiculous work. Obviously needs to be a little bit more consistent with the easy shots. That's something yeah, you always want to make sure you hit 100% of those kind of shots. But the flashy plays are definitely there for him. And uh, he's been a huge factor with 18 frags in this first half of his team sitting at five five rounds total. Now this is going to be a full-on force buy for Optic in the last round. They have uh, four Tech Nines, one AK in play. Seems like three players just rushing in alley. It's going to be an early trade-off coming in. Uh, they've found out an alley already. Yeah, this is going to be pretty pressure now for FLG. They've got angles that they can't really cover anymore. Little's come here to try and save the day, but everyone's so low. This is going to be pretty darn tough, but actually Robo finds a nice position, even though he was a little worse for wear, but still Little operates as well as he can, leaving just Daps alive in another 1v3. Patron, 8 HP, Little 4, and Chopper 100. So this is certainly possible, but Chopper's on the front lines, and Patron finds the angle. So we'll be seeing the scoreline looking maybe not so bad for Fluffy Gangsters, but guys, we won't be jumping straight into the second half. We're going to go to a very short break, but when we're back, we'll be kicking back off with the second half. So welcome back. We are getting ourselves prepared for the second half of the map is live. So let's dive into it, not waste any time. Optic are in the lead. Nine to six with an extremely strong start. But I would say Fluffy Gangs turned up. No, it was merely just little with that all being absolutely obscene. But we are into underway. So what do we see so far? It looks like a standardized B hit with the Molly to follow. <laughs> yes, and they have a raid boss. Patron has taken an armor. Chopper, Patron making the first two into the bomb site, and they will get it because there's a very passive hole from Optic. 
think a lot of respect for the clock to close range, and as you can see right now, Fluffy Gangster just pushing in, and that's exactly what you need to do as well to be able to hold off the retaking CTs, but it's going to be the absolute opening kill. In before FLG with the three of their own, make it four. Now it's only Naf, but what a nice headshot from Naf. Still got two to play against Robo and Little. Two very different angles as well, so now I need to try to make these into two individual one-on-ones. He might be able to do that, but it's going to be Robo to pick up the fifth kill for Fluffy Gangsters of the round. And the more, well, very important pistol round for Fluffy Gangsters. And that was the Pistol King in that, you know, in that cobble game, the infamous cobble game. He was the one doing the damage, so, you know, you can't, you can't run him out just yet, but... And the Shotgun King. Oh, don't. I, I just, like, erased that from my memory because it just upsets me so much. It's just the triggering happens. Um, but yeah, Fluffy Gangsters giving themselves a bit of a lifeline here. Being able to build back into this is perfect. So hopefully they're able to keep this one going. I'll have to wait and see if maybe Optic again just kind of, uh, let's say, mess the bed on the second half as they did wow. in their previous game. Shush you. And well, this is this is looking similar, which is kind of worrying. But let's see if they can uh, keep this going. FLG have a chance here. They've got a lot of rifles as well, but they've just lost one. This is very interesting from Fluffy Gangsters. Very, they're just running in right now, but well, they will find a free bomb site. Still, little HP is very, very little. So, that could be an issue. At the same time, though, it's not a super heavy investment from Optic Gaming. They have an AK on Stanislav. I wonder why it's on him because he's low on HP as well. Chopper on a kill to uh, Nafly. Make things alleviating the pressure a little bit, but it's going to be a pattern going down by Daps. Small three on three. No kid in play, though. So, the kills need to come really fast if uh, Optic wants to be a part of this round, but. This is the moment in time where you probably should be saving your weapons, and I think that's exactly what's happening. Dabs is going to get just killed by Little because he has no idea there's a player in connector. Yeah, and Stan already got the hell out of there anyway. He got himself a rifle pretty early on, so you can't really blame him. And actually, he might be able to cost them a little more money, considering there was a lot of rifles up on the plate. Uh, Chopper didn't walk into him. In the end, Stan did end up sitting back. So there is a technical pause coming in. Um, and that's Dap have, Dap's having a couple of issues uh, sound-wise, so he needs to make sure they're resolved, so he's good going forward. Um, I'm wondering if the no-talking rule is still going on, I assume so. It should be. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take a quick work by it. See if, uh, yeah. I'm always curious to see if the other, do, does the other team have to be quiet? Yeah, they have to then. Yeah, I think yeah, both yeah, have to, but I think it's, 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 you know, I don't think the players really, like, it's, it's going to take a little while before to it get becomes, used to, yeah. yeah, become used to it, but so the admins need to be, uh, Taking care of it yeah. for for a little while, so people remind them of the fact that oh, just like no talking. Back of the head, just yeah, pretty much. Yeah, just give them a little shock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, <sighs> speaking of little shock, he's got himself on an old patchy car into this round, so that should be interesting. Should be fun. So yeah. We'll see. A little yes. interesting by Fluffy Gangster in the in the second that round was a though. Weird they round. they just kind of ran at the side. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I'm not a great fan. Man -man. I I want to see more calculated decision making. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, they ended up only losing two players, so you know, no that big of a harm done, but still, the risk is always there when you're just plowing the bomb sites. I want to see proper usage of grenades yeah. in those situations because that's just going to make it that much easier. It's all already been proven to be the best, best way to deal with anti ecos right now. Obviously, that might change. You know, this, the great thing about Counter Strike is that it keeps evolving all the time. Teams find new way of countering uh, things that other teams come up with. That's what we, what we call the involvement of the metagame. Hmm. Thank you for that lesson. You're Robert welcome. Natu. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> he just gives us, gives us a little, you know, trip down Natu Lane. Great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this should be back underway soon, I hope. I'm wondering what Daps has done to break his headset instantly. Well, it must be the in ears, to be fair. So. Mm, yeah, those can break quite easily, actually. Yeah. yeah I, I break my Sennheisers like once a week, I'm almost certain. <laughs> Hashtag not a sponsored shout out because they wouldn't probably enjoy that. So, you know, yeah. So, oh, Graham's fixing things. That's Graham on the stage, ladies and gentlemen, known as Delayham as well. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay, yep. that's a beautiful nickname. That I was have. given by I think Astralis. Okay. Um, <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> he causes delays. <laughs> so it does make me giggle. Uh, that's him again. Okay. Hi, hi, Graham. Graham, can you hear us? No. No, he's ignoring. Let, let him let it focus on what he's actually doing, so we can get on he's, with the game. He's Plug it in a headset, it's not that hard. You'd hope at least. Yeah, you He's actually know. fixing like the motherboard or something. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, shouldering something. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to working, Normie Graham. <laughs> I'm just an idiot. 
I feel really uh, guilty. I don't feel guilty. It's only Graham. It's fine. But yeah, it's going to be interesting now to see. I mean, obviously, what happened last night with Optic on the side. You know, they, if if they lose the first weapon round, it's just, you know they could be feeling those flashbacks from what happened yesterday. Um, and it is a real thing, mental game like that. You look at oh, uh, yeah. you know, Liquid, I, I hate to say it, you know, they're the easy go-to in this sort of thing, but it is a mental game. That's why you need to have either a coach or your personality in the team that is good at like keeping people at bay, keeping yeah. them in check, you know, uh, mentally. Yeah. Um, the dynamic, the kind of dynamic that nobody sees from the outside of the team. Um, that makes a huge difference in terms of how you deal with uh, struggles, how do you deal with uh, with all the the X on X situations post after you, you let's say you, you do a default and then it becomes like a three on four situation. You know, it's all down to the dynamic within the team. How is that going to play out? Yeah. How does the players uh, deal with those situations? And openly, I think Optic were looking for a coach, I, so yeah. they're still having to kind of deal with the fact that they don't actually have anyone behind them to kind of create that atmosphere and clearly there was you know some issues with the roster before um so coming out of that hopefully mix was being able to bring it down he does seem like an incredibly kind of matured player the way he approaches games and his attitude towards it so that's always going to be quite interesting to see how he mixes with the others you know how he brings across maybe that eu mentality quote unquote if that does apply at all but yeah a, a coach would be interesting and again i'm surprised they're struggling to find someone but uh. they were saying actually at pro league it's actually incredibly hard to find someone exactly. who doesn't want like ridiculous money mm. or who's just even just qualified to be able to do it and has you know dedication towards it yeah it's a tough job i mean uh, it's it's something you be basically spending all the amount of time that the team is practicing plus more yeah because you have to um, do all the research so, yeah, and kind of put behind it yeah it's full commitment in my opinion you basically need a coaching team behind it uh, not only one coach but also mm. someone else to uh you know be the analytical coach who, who reviews the demos you know gives you the rundowns and something you can apply in gameplay and then you have someone as sort of like a head coach figure who is good at good at like the uh, uh, kind of uh, hands-on coaching. Yeah. So who do you think's got the best setup right now out of teams? Let's say just outside of you know obviously just uh, this. But uh, well, I don't. I'm not really sure how many teams have like uh, an actual coaching staff that they have someone. No, I don't know about a full staff. That's the thing. Obviously, you know that you know, a good couple of teams would be a guy behind them. They probably have some support, it, but it's like as it, you said, the full coaching. Yeah, it all depends. Out. It all depends on the dynamic of the team. I mean, if if like say let's say Navi for example, mm. Starx is is their in-game leader, but they have also Zeus in there, yeah. who is a previous in-game leader who can take the reins when need be. And he can be, he can react on situations appropriately uh, within the game because there are things you cannot really call from outside uh, because it's a lot about feel and a lot about intuition and instinct. Yep. Um, so that kind of dynamic is just good that they have. But there are teams that don't have that kind of leadership, um, and, and they will need to have that coach that is super hands-on. It's basically just like like playing a game of chess, just moving little figures yeah. <laughs> left yeah. and right. Or having like strings, you can pull the players. <laughs> the puppeteer. Yeah, the, the puppeteer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and it's, it's all depends on the dynamic, really. Mm. It's kind of hard to find even find out about the dynamic as well, because you don't normally no, hear about the stuff not, behind no. the coach as no. well. Because I think it's uh, Dota, they allow a lot more to be seen or, or known about, at least from Valve side towards majors. Like I know they have you know, a lot more people flown out for the teams, um, but I'm kind of curious and see as how that kind of develops as well down the line. You know, will they still allow people to be on the PC behind? So you know, that's not been particularly liked either. So it's like. I, I think that actually, while we're on this topic, we've uh, just had information this might be a longer uh, break than expected, because as you can see, Dap still has his headset off, so we don't want to rush the players because of us or anything like that. We want to give them as much time as needed to get things sorted out, so we're going to carry on talking about coaching off there so you don't get any fun information. Haha, <laughs> get wrecked. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bam. All right, guys, we're going to go to a short break when we're back. Hopefully all the issues will be resolved, and we'll see you then. <laughs>
So, welcome back, ladies and gents. It was a little bit of an extended pause there. Uh, hopefully all is fixed. It looks like everything is good right now. Um, I Fingers think crossed. They just need Mark somebody. Yeah, exactly. Just my skull at this point. <laughs> Eight to nine, Optic are still in the lead at least. And we are back underway. Stan, just to refresh your memories, did keep hold of the rifle. They managed to do a fair bit of damage in that prior round. And he spotted armor as well. And exactly. He su just supported that a little bit. Why not, I guess, at this point. But then again, Littles found himself an orb. Well, bought himself an orb, should I say. We've seen what that man can achieve on that CT side already. G making their way to the uh, other bomb side, but it's going to be that fly with the Deagle once again. Feels like I've seen this movie before, but the bomb gets planted. It's a 4 and 4 situation. Daps playing around the smoke. He does notice the Roman, but only manages to make very little damage. Now it becomes a very tough one for Optic to do much about, uh, about it. So Stanislav needs to be the man to make some work. But just as I say that, though, Little is going to dispose of him. Yeah, and this was not done just yet as well. Look at this guy. He's just having a whale of a time, just lining him up, knocking him down. Down to Mixwell, just a P250. And he's going to try to find him. So, all in all, not an awful round. Craft the T-side relatively clean. Kept yes. enough on the board. They could easily drop out Robbo if needed. So, all is well. But we're going to finally see the buy-up going in for the CTs. Yeah. Well, the first hurdle comes in. The first weapon round. Let's see if Opti can answer now. It is a 9-9 scoreline. All the play for here. Optic obviously picking up those 9 rounds on the T side. They haven't picked up one here in the city yet. And yesterday we saw them struggle on the city side massively. Um, it's going to be a more aggressive approach from them compared to a public answer straight, straight from the get go. As we can see, Stanislav here towards the ladder room, and this is exactly what I wanted to uh, Fluffy Gangsters to do as well. Yeah, Mixwell's responding really nicely to what Fluffy Gangsters are trying to do. He has to land the shots, which he actually is. A little more consistently, I guess you could argue, than actually Little was doing. But now the flashy stuff has to come in. He's doing just well on that aspect too. But Chopper's on the flank. He's on a long yeah. flank as well. That could be massive, assuming that Little and Roman can slow them down enough for him to become effective. And Roman has a lot of fire coming in. Naf's the one to catch him. And now Chopper, what can you do? You have the world at your feet. And a lot of bullets now turned, or his <laughs> guns turned your way. So this is going to become a little more hard. And it looks like Rush is actually going on the defuse here. So that could add insult to injury, and it does. Chopper does some damage, but it's not good enough. The bomb gets defused. And sadly for, well, Fluffy Gangster, they just didn't manage to it's actually uh, get back into that. Yeah, it's such another great example of if you, do, if you don't manage to uh, be able to push all the way down on the inner bomb side for the effort plan situation. so hard to hold off the CTs once they're retaking, especially when they're down in numbers like they were. Mixwell doing a massive job there, getting those two kills, uh, making a five on three situation. So that's going to be the first one round, not going the way of Optics. So they're not getting a massive flashbacks as of yet from last night. Still early days to take the lead once again, though. And they make it cleanly as well, so that's good for their economy. But the Kings are still with the money to buy into this one as well. And decided to go for a bit of a default approach to play Nally on his holding team mid and to the door calls. So, so much to work with here. Now we're going to try and find some info down by Ivy. No one's really that close yet. Little and Roman are a little further back, and they do have the angle to start with. So it's going to be a little tough for them to get back into. But Daps and Naf can lock this down quite comfortably together. They pop flash together. Actually, going to peek for it. So aggressively looking for info down this way. You can't really blame them. It's such a pivotal point, but already the smoke goes down, and Roman's going to use it well. Finds was a good position. Up by Ivy, Flash is perfect. Daps now under pressure, gonna have to try and cover the goods, and he does. That's Roman gone, so good advantage now for the CT side. And let's see what the T's now do to respond. Yeah, but he was unfortunate. They're very much alone, so there's no one to try to trade that kill. Very individualistic, actually. Now they're gonna have two players pushing inner bomb side, which helped by Mixwell all the way back. He's not gonna connect on that shot. On the Patron gets on the bomb side, but nice shot on the Robo though to recover in that situation. Now, Mixwell, do you, do you want to find that fight to Little, or do you want to maybe try and play the site? Patron's staying on the site to keep the attention there, but good intuition from the T side to just know that there's going to be a bit of a stack coming in against him. So they're going to take the fight against Daps, and Little wins that. So therefore, suddenly the A bomb site is open. Little's got the bomb, though, which is still a bit of a problem, but he should be able to get that plan down cleanly. And now Patron can be the guy on the flank. So again, using these three players well, but they need to, again, withstand the site. And Naps found a good angle. I think Little might have spotted him, or at least heard possibly something there. So several angles now to keep under wraps and none of them work out so far. It's down to Little and this man is known for those beastly plays and this would be the prime chance to show us what he's got. 1v2 now. Bombs planted for him. This would be the ace bearing in mind. And Mixwell shoulder peeking in. He knows what he's up against and it's Mixwell. 
to show what he has in this round at least. Picks up three and the defuse and the ever important kill towards Little there at the yep. end. Great patience by Meeks while they're just holding for that flanker to come in. And as his teammates started faltering on the side, he had to make a play. They got the flank and Meeks gets the kill. He gets the last one as well. So, nice play. I think he got three kills in that round as well. So he's definitely coming into play this time around on the city side. Well, it's going to be the second round in a row from Optic. Still money for Fluffy Gangster to bind to this. They have an op in play on Little. It gets for everyone else and a massive amount of equipment as well. All the grenades they would need. A little already in team main. Trying to get a little peek. It's on top of the six train. He notices one but decides to fall back. You know, these teammates are again approaching it by default. Nafly though with an op of his own as we have double ops here for Optic. It's going to be the one to get the opening kill. Yeah, maybe not expecting Naf to pick that up so so quickly, but yeah, supporting Mixwell on that, so now he can ease, or not easily, but he can certainly dominate down by Ivy, and he That's does get the tag, and <laughs> goes back again, and well, the nade does eventually finish off Chopper, the guy he tagged just on the cross through, but little there. Why would you, why would you try to cross that angle when, you know, there's an op, uh, without throwing a flash, or, you know, run boosting or something else, I mean, he just tries to go the other side and gets punished for it and it's gonna be the two opening kills going away of optic now it's only all up to robo patron a little to make it work and i think they're kind of they're fully invested on this one yeah pretty much except for a little so it would be uh equal territory for them if they lose this one now for optic they need to be passive at this point they have already made the advantage for themselves but as i say that rush does not comply with what i say decides to take a peek to team in a little is ready for it he gets the kill and now it's doable for fluffy gangsters. Yeah, and they still have a decent amount of utility towards Little too. He's got smoke, two flashes, and a nade, so he can easily work at least some angle in towards the site, as try and support the others. Patron's made it out. And it's going to be Daps and Stan to be on this side. They have to be the defenders. They have to be the bastions of this. Good nade comes out, but it's Patron to land the shot. Daps responds accordingly, but not well enough. Can't string it together, so it's back down to a 2v2. This is looking more and more possible. Patron's got the push up. He's in a good spot. But again, how much can they hold on to this? Naf's found the angle there. Two hops with the retake as well, so I definitely need to connect on those shots. Patron, oh, he's gonna get a nice hot headshot on the Naf fly. That's all up to mix well, also on an op. On top of that one train, and it's gonna get that kill. Then the third round in a row for Optic Gaming, but that caught a little bit too close for comfort for sure. Considering it was a five on three, Rush unnecessarily taking a peek to team main, making it a uh, four on three situation in a, in a bombsite push. Almost working out, becomes a two on two, but it's going to be Mixwell once again with a massive impact kill. So even if he wasn't being you know, super flashy in that first half, at least he's coming to play for the second one. Here we saw that little kill onto Rush as well, and Patron's a nice headshot on the Naf fly. But then Mixwell managing to take the right angle and win that one on one. Yeah, you can see Mixwell finding a bit of consistency here for him. Little though going straight back in on this, and actually. This one, Mixwell might cross paths here, and you can see that actually Mixwell was hunting that down too. He was looking for that angle on him, but it was <laughs> rushing there to find what's, him. What, what, what's that play all about? I mean, you go alone into uh, through team main on top of the sixth train. I'm frustrated. Trying I'm carrying. to force a play like uh, this just doesn't make sense at all. You're just basically putting all your eggs in one basket and saying, "Let's go. Let's see what happens." Obviously, it's not going to work out. It gets taken down. He did not really have an escape plan in that situation whatsoever. So it is going to be that 4 or 5 situation. And uh, limited grenades for them as well. Two Galils and two AKs. And they're playing this kind of... I, I frustrated CS may be the wrong word, but one of those questionable plays like Chopper, kind of just needlessly jumping through an Ivy, and then that you know, very individual moment from Little where sure, if it works out, it looks flashy and cool, and you know he's the hero of the round, but more there's often than not, you don't win those sort of rounds. Yeah, I mean, there's basically a couple of options you can have. If you're going to have that all in play, and someone going out team in like Little just did, then have everyone else just rush inner bombs that are something stupid like that, or just plowing down ladder, trying to force a trade, and just try to plow that bomb side. Now they're going to be going inner mix while opening things up. Daps to connect as well. Yeah, does he make it too? He does not. Roman. With the retaliation before Mix, well, once again, another big kill. Wow, he's definitely fired up now. That's that's the play we want to see from him. He was very much missing in the previous uh, game, so even at the start, it's a little slower. But now looking at the scoreline, we're at 13 to 9. Again, Fluffy Gangsters seemingly having kind of, I guess, bursts of performance. It never seems consistent. It doesn't seem like they can recover or. Problem is, I don't know. It's not well, well constructed. It's yep. a lot about just individual skill and like players like Little trying to force plays and then people just reacting off of that. But 
it only takes you so far. Now it seems to be, well, they have to eco onto this one, and uh, they already have Chopper out of team in. Meanwhile, the rest of the team is coming down a ladder, but it's going to be easy pickings for Optic. Already two kills going the way. Make that three, make it four, and a five in an uh, easy matter for Optic. Yeah, very, very comfortable. And, and it is quite polar opposites here, because you look at Optics T side, so they were very well constructed. Yep. They had yeah. very refined approaches to things. Now, Fluffy have kind of come into this and gone, let's just run at them, see if it works. And well, you know, for the pistol, it didn't do too badly. But beyond that, once the guns came out to play, it became a little bit difficult. Let's see if maybe there's more in the repertoire of Fluffy Gangster because it looks very one-dimensional so far. I'm hoping we get to see maybe a set piece, maybe a, a nice play off the back of it. But again, Chopper's just going to plow our main. And it does seem as though we're, again, just seeing this Let's just go, let's just rush, let's just try and find something. And it's not worked out, Stan is allowed complete freedom there. Just pushed up by Pop, finds Robo, finds Roman. Little's still doing damage, sure, that's not too surprising. And now suddenly there's a response back. So can they string this together now? Three on three situation now. And they do get the third kill of the round as well on their, on their, on their, on their part. And uh, Chopper getting that one, now it's a three on two. But there's one of the CDs on the flank, that's going to be Mixwell. AWP going to team main. And things does slow down for a while. FLG just waiting for the CDs to make a move. Such strange pacing from Fluffy Gangsters. It, it makes sense, but it's, you know, well, it makes sense now, but it's very hard to watch sometimes. It just seems very uh, erratic, this very um, kind of emphatic style that you're seeing coming out. But looks like Daps is moving a little closer to this. Yeah, Daps can make a play. That's when Mixwell could just come out of team main. And the money's good enough, I guess. And it's a 2 of 3, so you can definitely go for this. Daps does notice the player in T... Uh, quad, rather. But it's gonna be... Uh, oh, oh, Daps and Mixwell both gonna kill down. They know where the last remaining FLG player is. He's gonna go down as well. That's and sick. That's just gonna be another round going away of Optic. That was absolutely sick. Credit again for the positioning coming out. I think it was Mixwell who was already around by the T side of things. So he kind of works his way in maybe in an angle they didn't expect and, and that close push up. Um, but still, really, really well done on the retake here, considering this pacing from FLG has been up, down, left, right, center. It's been so erratic throughout this game. They'd actually held a decent crossfire, but Mixwell's position here coming back in, supported by Daps finding Patron, just kind of unraveled that nice kind of three-player stack that they had left alive. But now, double ups are out, Nap been playing down by Ivy, been doing pretty well with it previously. Not this time, he's been pushing down by those brown holes on B. Looking for a little bit of dominance there, and why not? Little is waiting, though, so this could be a bit of a hard battle to win, and Little has the angle first, he lands the shot. That's the basics that I expected him to approach with here, but again, maybe a slower start to this round. This looks a little bit more well-constructed. Oh. For now. Let's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Let's see what the FLG manages to build up out of this. They have the early advantage, but the punch time is only ahead of us right now. Let's see the aggression from Stanislav coming in. It's going to equalize the situation, getting the kill on the Patron. Now, Robo play with the idea of just going down the ladder. You have three of LG players in team main, and they're just running out. Rush, the easy kill. He's going to see the bomb as well. He's going to make it two. He does. Roman goes down, and now it's only going to be all up to Robo, and he goes down by Mixwell as well. Nice two kills, and that's going to be Optic with a 16-9 win against the Fluffy Gangsters. And that T-side from the Fluffy Gangsters just looked so lacking in comparison to what else we've seen from them. Again, you said it was one-dimensional, I say it was little-dimensional. <laughs> You're not wrong, it really was. Little, and you could see almost the frustration in his playstyle. He always seemed kind of a little on his own, a little, I'm just going to try and make the play again. I have to make that play again. And Optics can't really play think. was wonderful to greet that with. Yeah, I mean, you can't really expect to be winning games uh, in, this, in this kind of a tournament with yeah. that kind of a style. It has to be more well-constructed. There needs to be some kind of a baseline you can go by. Instead, it was just, yeah, like you said, little try to make some hero plays, and you can only you can only take you that far. Well, he's certainly shown he has some real, real talent, that young man, and, and hopefully we get to see more from him in the future. But yeah. as I said, it'd be nice to see maybe more of a foundation around that coming in from Fluffy Gangsters. But for Optic, we finally saw them closing out very well on that second half. We saw one mix while the man you know, on the screen right there having a good performance with the orb. That's what we wanted to see, consistency coming in. The way he was playing was impressive. I enjoyed their T-side again. Very well constructed. The CT side looked good. The communication on the retakes was there. This is the optic that people are starting to go, okay, they're actually picking up some really good results here. This is starting to look pretty decent for them. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a good building block for them going further in this qualifier. On the other hand, for Fluffy Gangsters, I mean, going into this, I expected to see individuals that uh, would be exciting, and that's exactly what we're getting out of Little uh, in Fluffy Gangsters. And, uh, you know, similar to what Peter was doing at 
what was it, ESL Katowice maybe oh, gosh, qualifiers yeah, or true. what was it? A year ago or two years ago. ago? It's been a while, two years ago. What, what? <laughs> That's a long time in our <laughs> uh, minds. But still, I mean, the point being that you have these uh, CIS teams that you will find those one or two individuals that are exceptional, and then eventually down the line, they'll, they'll find their way into one of the bigger teams in, in the region. Well, we're hoping we see more from them, obviously, in this tournament still. They do have another go of things, you would argue, three are generally going home, so they have one more shot of this to try and get themselves back into play, but still. I think that's enough from us. We yep. can head down and hear what the others have to say. Thank you very much, guys. I've managed to collect daps here amidst celebrations, of course, for Optic getting their first win of this qualifier. Now, Daps, just to kick things off here as well, we saw characteristically uh, almost from Fluffy Gangsters, they gave you a lot of space on, on their CT side. I saw multiple times players like yourself and Mixwell were able to walk onto that A side uncontested. Did you feel that that was definitely quite a, a striking from them? Or was there anything else that you sort of identified as characteristic from these guys? Uh, coming into it, we have no idea how they play. We never watched them play before, so... We just kind of started to play really standard at the start to see how they played, and we noticed that they, they were giving us a lot of respect on their CT side, which was surprising because we saw their game versus Mouse Sports, and it seemed they played more confident almost yesterday. Um, they started to pick it up later in the half and uh, at the start of their CT side as well, but yeah, we, we were given a lot of room, and uh, it let us get early picks. And obviously, you guys got out to an early lead at half time. It was nine to six. Uh, and we did start to see Little uh, from Fluffy Gangsters actually doing a lot of the heavy lifting on his team side of things. Now, from your perspective, when you see an opposition player really start to perform like that, especially an AWPA, do you work around that? Do you have to work around that? Or did you just continue unchanged without paying him too much heed? Uh, we didn't change our game plan around Little, even though he was playing really well. It was more so us failing to trade properly that gave him a lot of those rounds. Um, it was more so our mistakes than him just like, like he shouldn't be allowed to just jump around the bomb train and get three or four kills like he was on a few of the rounds. So it was partially our mistake and partially him playing really well. Um, but no, we didn't change how we played based off of him. And finally for you guys, obviously Mixwell coming into your side from GBOTS. Uh, he has a history and calling, of course, uh, on that old lineup. Obviously, comes in now to a team where he's not speaking his first language. I mean, how has the transition period been for him, and what kind of role does, does he take in terms of being a voice in the team? Uh, he doesn't call. I'm not sure if he did. He call on GBoss. I didn't even know that. Uh, well, that, that's the talk amongst the analysts as well, saying that he did. He was a fairly strong voice, so that's where I get it from. All right, um, his role on the team is <clears throat> more so a hybrid, so him and Naf kind of switch between opping and rifling depending on the map and depending on how confident they feel. Um, but yeah, Mixwell, if he wants to do something, he'll be like, I want to do this, someone come help me. Um, but yeah, definitely there, he can speak good English, but there is things that he will have trouble like trying to explain of what he wants to do, and we're still trying to like get around that hurdle or the language barrier. But uh, it's, it's a work in progress and it's coming along. Sure. Well, uh, hopefully we'll see a bit more of him and the rest of you guys as well and uh, tomorrow and further. Thank you very much for joining me, Daps, as well. You can join your team and uh, celebrate that win there as well. So, Alex, that should give you guys something to go on here. Optic do bounce back from yesterday's performance with a solid win. Let's see if it sets them in good stead for the rest of the qualifier. Cheers, Mitch and Daps there. It's my fault, Mitch. I'm sorry. I said Mixwell was the in-game leader. I, I, I was always convinced that was, of course, in Barcelona where I was, you know, 50% sangria. Um, but anyway, <laughs> we've got myself Vendetta and Meta's hanging out with us, and we're going to be talking a little bit about that first game of day two. It feels crazy that that's just game one. May have taken a little longer than we anticipated, but Fluffy Gangsters once again keeping games competitive. This time and last time, oh, not enough. Let's be fair. Little. Little <laughs> kept it competitive. <laughs> okay. We're, we're going to run with that. I mean, No, no but it, you, you have to, honestly. Yeah. Uh, even in, in the CIS minor, where they qualified for this, and they even went through the close qualifiers as well, so they've taken a long road. He has been by far the, the best player on that team by, by mm. quite some margin, to the point where if you would have looked at Sad, you would have been like, what the hell is this guy doing with these guys? Uh, and that's kind of the harsh truth, and I think we saw it uh, well, quite evidently here on train as well, because whenever on the CT side, as you know, Mitch uh, said in the interview with, uh, with Dabs, that they, they gave up so much space on the CT side, so whenever they actually got anything done, it was off the back of Little actually coming through with some heroics. And uh, it's kind of disappointing to see, because I think Dabs was very on point when he said that they felt a lot more confident in what they were doing versus Mouse Sports yesterday than what they were doing on train, especially on their CT side. And uh, did it make much sense to you, Vince? I mean, 
we saw the style of play that Fluffy Gangsters were succeeding with versus Mouse, and it didn't look like the same gameplay today. Well, different map. Um, I, I, I was quite surprised as well at how passive Fluffy Gangsters played because I feel like they do have a couple of aim stars on their team. Obviously, mm -hmm. Little is a beast. We, we saw a couple of times landing crazy no scope shots here, there, and everywhere. But the rest of the team was a lot more aggressive yesterday. I do wonder if it comes back to the whole point of what we assumed that Fluffy Gangsters would probably be like the whipping boy who would just get wrecked off everybody. Then they take Mouse Sports close and, like, hold on a second, guys, we can actually do this. Do they put pressure on their own shoulders? Do they then start to go back in their shell a little bit more because they're not unshackled from any of that stress? So I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but Fluffy Gangsters looked a, a shadow of what they did yesterday. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a really good point just because of the fact that we are uh, we're highly anticipating Fluffy Gangsters to probably follow this downward trend now. I mean, we think they kind of hit their stride with Mouse Sports, of course. Commiserations to any Mouse Sports fans that wanted a, c a couple of easy wins. Uh, that was a very hard fought battle for them. We'll be seeing more of Mouse Sports a little later on today. Any closing thoughts on that match? Kind of wham bam, thank you, ma'am. Um, it's good to see Mixful coming back yep. into zone. Uh, I still think they could have gone with Cobblestone if that was the case, because I don't think we're going to see two poor performances from him. Uh, in a, in a row, so you know, good to see him coming back into it. Probably builds a lot, and builds a lot of confidence going into day three. Definitely, especially for Optic as well. After losing from 11-4 lead, yeah. to, to yeah, get that absolutely. win with that belt can do them a world of good. Yeah, and of course Optic, this is a huge tournament for them as an, op as an opportunity for them to kind of prove that they are and can battle to be the kings of North America, as it has been discussed. That this is this would be a big starting point for them to prove what they are capable of. And a win now just put them in good stead coming into the next day. It is one game, one day, one game per day for Optic now. They're going to put their feet up and watch the next game, which will be Renegade Splice. That's coming up after our break. We're going to take a quick one, guys, but when we come back, it's going to be a game of the losers. Uh, it's going to be the Australians versus the North American hopeful Splice. We'll bring that to you in just a moment.